Ezekiel chapter 8, verse 13. He said, also unto me, is God speaking to Ezekiel? Turn thee again and go back and get chapter, get, go back in all, all our studies, but go back and, and get the rest of chapter 8 because chapter 8 is your typical Baptist. We're not going to do chapter 8 like we're not going to do Jeremiah chapter 10. And you'll see why. So, turn it again. Turn around. Now I shall see a greater abomination. I want to stress that. A greater abomination. And this is greater than the image of, uh, of jealousy. This is greater than the seat put in the temple of idolatry. And I would say Baal, but we're looking at Baal in a moment. Then he brought me to the door, the gate of the Lord's house. Welcome all today to the Lord's house. It's so glad to be in the Lord's house. Yes, we are in the Lord's house. 2021, this does speak for the Baptist church. But you're going to wish it not. You're going to wish Stiley didn't say nothing. But Stiley has to speak. This is why Stiley gets pre preachers and Christians don't like style because he's got the truth. So let's take the Lord's house as your Baptist church, though it's not. This is the temple in Jerusalem. But for the sake of the Baptist church, we will say, welcome to the Lord's house. Which was toward the north. And behold, there sat women weeping for Tammuz. There you go. There's your Baptist church. And he said to me, has thou seen this old son of man? Turn in yet, okay? You see these women weeping for Tammuz? Boo hoo ha wa ha. This is the season you call today the Catholic Church Lent. This is your Roman Catholic Lent taken from the Babylonian Syrian idol. And we're going to look at Tammuz. Tammuz. Oh, we got so much. You don't see my ugly face because we got a lot of stuff. I'm sorry that Facebook can't see this. He's a Syrian idol. Mentioned in Ezekiel 8.14. Where the women are represented as weeping for it. It. One of the prophets said, it ain't God. It's generally supposed that Tammuz was the same deity as the Phoenician. That's where we get our alphabet. Adonis. Okay? All these gods are different names with aliases. That's all they are. Perhaps the Egyptian or Isis. A fabled death and restoration of Donis. A death and resurrection of Tammuz. Of a Babylonian, Egyptian, Roman, Greek, Phoenician, Syrian, Baptist god. And I ain't talking about Jesus Christ. He died, he went into hell, and he come back alive. And all the women are weeping because he died. Supposed to be symbolic departure and return of the sun. We ain't done yet. So get the return of the sun because, 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 we Baptists don't know what the Bible says. So, return of the sun, look at verse 16. 8, 16. And he brought me to the inner court of the Lord's house. Welcome to the Lord's house. And behold the door of the temple of the Lord. So the Lord's house is the temple and ain't your church building. Though there are some Baptist churches that call themselves the temple. Between the porch and the altar, and that altar is either the brazen altar... Or is Ahab's altar? Ahab's altar was put alongside the brazen altar. Let the people worship at the brazen altar, and me, you worship at my great altar. About five and twenty men. 
with their backs toward the temple of the Lord. So behind them is the temple of the Lord. And their faces toward the east. And they worship the sun toward the east. Ladies and gentlemen, Christians of Baptist churches, that is the sunrise service. Look at verse 15. Has thou seen this old son of man? Turn thee again, and thou shalt see a greater abomination. The sunrise service. Let me tell you, even if you're a Baptist, even if you're a born-again, Bible-believing Christian, if you are involved in the sunrise service, you ain't worshiping Jesus, you're worshiping Tammuz, and you will suffer for your sins at the judgment seat of Christ. You sign and seal my name, Stanley Hayward, to say sunrise service is a sin. And I know one of your famous, well-known preachers, get up and say, well, you know, when I, was in here, I was down here in Florida, they asked me to come and do a sunrise service because no one would do it. Well, join in the heathen, sir. Because you can't serve God in Belial. You can't serve, serve God in the devil. You can't have God in Taman. And celebrate the summer solstice the first with lamentations and then rejoicing with obscene, obscene rivals. Uh, let's go to Easton. A corruption of Demuzi and executing sun god Baal. The sun disc around the Catholic head. On Sunday, we worship. Well, you know what the Bible says? They worship on the first day of the week. It didn't say Sunday. It said the first day of the week. Our calendars are formatted and approved by the Roman Catholic Church. So you got a Roman Catholic calendar that you call Christian. Really? Adonis of the Greeks. The husband of the goddess Esther. You know who she is. She's Esther. The Chaldean calendar, there was a month set apart for the honor of this god. Month of June to July. His honey pie has a celebration called Easter. And then Sweet Cakes has his celebration on June and July. Do you care to know when Tammuz was born? He was born on December 25th. The winter solstice. All sun gods, all sun gods declare that their birthday is on December 25th. Not the Bible, not Jesus Christ. At this festival that lasted six days with worshipers with loud lamentation bewailed the funeral of the God. And they sat weeping for Tammuz, Ezekiel 8.14. So when, 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 they turn, when he comes up and these women are weeping for Tammuz, Oh, our poor Tammuz has died. Oh, our God has died. <laughs> when Jesus Christ died, there is no talk of weeping. Go back and look at the scriptures. No one weeped when Jesus died. All right. I see. Some of these. Uh, Tammuz, a Babylonian god whose worship spread into Phoenicia into your Baptist churches. And he's got the Sumerian, Sumerian name Demuzai, Tammuzai which means son of light. He is the form of the sun god and bridegroom, look at the interesting words, of Esther, the woman with the boobies. That the Baptist, you know, we have to have Resurrection Sunday on Honey Pie's celebration. Who's the Honey Pie? Tammuz's wife, Esther. And I'm not talking about the Baptist. I'm not talking about the Catholic. I'm not talking about the Presbyterian. I ain't talking about the Charismatic. I'm talking about Baptists. And one of the things that caused me a problem in my last church is the celebration of Easter and Christmas 
Esther and Tammuz never to deal with Jesus Christ. He was celebrated as a shepherd, cut off in early life by a boar. Well, my shepherd was, was slain on a, by the Jewish people on a cross. Esther descended to the Hades to bring him back to life. He was mourned on the second of the month of Tammuz. There was an actual month named Tammuz. His Canaanite name is Adonai, given to the rise of the Greek Adonis. And he's later identified with the Egyptian, look at all these, Orises. In Amos 8.10 and Zechariah 12.10, the mourning for the only son may be a reference to the annual mourning of the words of the false god. Devil slay. So, Tammuz is a Phoenician isle, supposed to some as the Greek Adonis. As in the Vulgate, and we don't care about the Vulgate. Prophet saw women weeping for Tammuz, who was to the tradition he had been slain. They were weeping when they came to the tomb of Jesus to realize that the rock had been rolled away. Called the Syrian Isle. So, John Wesley says the outer court, the court of the women, so-called. So there was a particular court of the women because they were allowed to come into it. Weeping and performing all the lewd and beastly rites. Of that idol that the Greeks called Adonis. Ooh, I don't think you want to know what's going on. I don't want to know. And let's see. I lost it here. Alright. He brought me to the door of the gates house. This is the Geneva Bible. Geneva Bible is just before the King James Bible. To the north, and behold, there sat women weeping for Tammuz. A little different, but the same. The Jews write that this was a, pop a prophet of the idols, Tammuz, who after his death was once the year mourned for in the night. And Tammuz would come to be born on December 25th. So you're not celebrating the, 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 the celebration of Jesus Christ. You're celebrating Tammuz. You then you, the other holiday that people come to church, you're celebrating Honey Pie, Esther. Who went into hell and got her husband out of hell. And that happens in Baptist churches, the celebration thereof. And I tell you, there's no anchor in that foundation. You're sunk. And there's so much. I've got, I got videos. You can go on our Hayward family website. I've got videos about Tamers. And all this nonsense. 8.13, he said unto me, turn, turn yet again, and thou shalt see a greater abomination. And we're looking at Tamers. Do you know about Tammuz? You better know about Tammuz because God told Ezekiel that's a greater abomination. Everything developed in Tammuz is a greater abomination and that happens in your Baptist churches and it's just perfectly well. It's a Christian holiday set off the two Christian holidays of the church. Do you want the pastor's name? Because you don't want to cross that Jordan. Because that man sat here in my house and told, well, those are the two Christian holidays of the church. Easter and Christmas and named them. The size of the fact is I've already put out many of documented names of people who know what they're talking about, of archaeology, of people who got the brains I volunteered and gave their names in the reports that when you go on our website to study Tammuz, I gave a... Uh, uh, then he has the nerve to say on Easter, well, it's Resurrection Sunday. Well, it's kind of funny because Passover was on a Tuesday. Three days later would, uh, would have been a Friday. 
How do you get resurrection? And all of a, you know, happy resurrection Sunday, happy resurrection. I say he wasn't resurrected today on Sunday. And he wouldn't have been resurrected on Sunday anyway because it wasn't called Sunday. I don't think God would have called it a Catholic holiday, a Catholic month, a Catholic day. I don't think God would have anything to do with the scriptures with Catholic. I think they're all Jewish holiday, that he died on the Passover. I would assume that he was born on the Jewish holiday. And if you look at the holidays, it would be probably the Feast of Tabernacles. And that if you go into prophets, hopefully we get there before we get, get to Matthew. One of the prophets right? You must come in the millennia at the Feast of Tabernacles. If you don't come during the Feast of Tabernacles, you're not going to get no rain. So show up to the birthday of Jesus in the millennium. But not now. And we just want to make Christians so worldly and so ungodly that when they stand before Jesus, why did it burn up? Our pastor said it was good. Well, is your pastor the authority or is the Bible? Oh, yeah, the Bible's no authority. History's not authority. So a greater abomination, verse 14. Then he brought me to the door to gate of the Lord's house. <laughs> that Lord's house is the temple, not your church building. It can't be the Lord's house. Because you you don't have a holy place and a holy of holies. Though so I've met some pastors, the holy of holies would be their office. And one man to you know, touch not the Lord's anointed and do your prophets no harm. I'm like, then later on, I said, that's in the book of Psalms. That's not written to no Christian. Which was toward the north. And behold, there sat women weeping for Tamar. So in this court, it was said that there was a court just for the women. And they're over there having a woman saying all about weeping and crying for their dead God. That's going to come up from the grave after Honey Pie go gets it. An imitation, an artificial, an antichrist. Because it's an anti story of the true Jesus Christ that the devil came up with. So, your celebration of Easter and Christmas and Lent is an antichrist, not the antichrist, but it's an antichrist celebration. Don't expect to get rewards up in heaven for having this. I am telling you, I sign my name to it, Stiley William Hayward, born again, April 21st, 1987. You take part in this, you are a sinner, and you're going to have wood, hair, stuff. And if your preacher teaches this, you need to get out of that church. I'll sign my name to that. He said also, he said unto me, Hast thou seen this, O son of man? Title given to Ezekiel, Daniel, and Jesus. Turned in yet again and see a greater... I mean, he's got Ezekiel turning in circles of all the abominations at the temple. And they, the Lord's house and the Lord's house and the Baptist church today. And you just turn around, there's all kinds of abominations going on. They don't even have to write Bible. They got these holidays that have nothing to do with the Bible. Their lives are not Christ-like. Why well, to see him blues, I guess. A greater abomination than these. All right, so here's a greater, another great abomination. And he brought me to the inner court of the Lord's house. So he's, they're in the temple, but not in the holy place and not in the most holy. But remember, Ezekiel is a priest and Jeremiah were priests. And behold, the door to the temple of the Lord. So, here's a door that would lead you into the temple. And Solomon had two sets of doors, and they were French doors. Between the porch and the altar. Now, that altar could be, and there was a porch. That altar could be God's brazen altar, 
or it could be Ahab's altar. About five and twenty men, that's not very much, with their backs toward the temple of the Lord. And they're in Daytona Beach, Florida, and at the beach, and waiting for the sun to come up in Daytona Beach, Florida. I can tell you, all the Christian churches come down and meet at the beach. And one of your well-known preachers that travels all around has told the story, or they asked me to come down to the beach and do a sunrise. I would say, no! You tell Baal to go to hell. I'll go on the street and preach Jesus. But, you know, I can do anything. In the name of Jesus, of course. <laughs> and their backs toward the temple of the Lord and their faces toward the east. They're looking at the, for the sun. And they worship the sun toward the east. There's your sunrise service. And verse 15, it is a greater abomination. If you're a Baptist, if you are a Christian, and you partake of the sunrise service, it's a greater abomination. Read Ezekiel 8. And when you're done with that, you can go to Jeremiah 10 about the Christmas tree, which many Christians and Baptist preachers told, that can't be the Christmas tree. Deck the halls with boughs of holly, sugar and all, you are wrong. Silver and gold. Boy, how would they cover up their sins? Tammuz and the sunrise service are greater abominations, and Tammuz is one of your many sun gods. Apollo was a sun god, and the name of our NASA spacecraft. I had a pastor get up. Isn't it great? Our, look, look how great our spacecraft are going up in the sky. And then, and he, all right, you want me to say it? What? You call Dragon? Revelation 12? You enjoy watching Satan go up in the air? Would you like a rattle or would you like a binky? Carnal. There it is. King James Bible. Then he said to me, As thou seen this, O son of man, it's a light thing. It's a light thing to the house of Judah that they commit these abominations which they commit here. For they have filled the land with violence. Those are violence keep came up. And before, no, before uh, Noah shows up, it was violent. And had, provoked, had returned to provoke me to anger. Sunrise service, Tammuz provokes God anger. And lo, they put a branch to their nose. I have no idea what that means. Let's see. Bring it up. Uh, John Wesley has some. I like John Wesley. Uh, branch in nose. The branch, as worshippers of Bacchus, waved their thyrsus, the stalk wreathed with ivy, and bowed their hair, heads, bodies, bowed their bodies, and often kissed branches. So did idolatrous Jews. So it's idolatry. Uh, I So even the Geneva Bible, it's idolatry, putting that branch to your nose. Today, Baptists put the cigarette in the mouth. Therefore will I also deal in fury. That's God speaking. My eye shall not spare, neither will... Listen, if God doesn't attack the Baptists for this worship, he will have to apologize to the people of Judah, and he ain't going to apologize. Neither will I have pity, though they cry in my ears with a loud voice, Oh, God, help me, God, I'm in trouble. Yet will I not hear them. That's remarkable. So, 
Let's try something else. So, uh, you know, it's King James, so, NIV, later I passed by when I looked at you, and I, think, why is it, it never does right, it does not want me to do right, so I want to, Right again. All right, NIV. Nutty Idiot's Version. Then he brought me to the entrance of the north gate of the house of the Lord, and I saw women sitting there mourning for the god Tamu. King James Bible doesn't even put God in there. He said, Do you not see this, son of man? You will see things that are even more detestable than not, not as strong. Then he brought me to the inner court, the house of the Lord, and there at the entrance of the temple between the, the portico and the altar were about 25 men with their backs toward the temple of the Lord and their faces toward the east, and they were bowing down to the sun in the east. Verse 15 has been removed. You notice that? So, New King James. Gotta hit the button. New King James. So he brought me to the door of the north gate of the Lord's house, and to my dismay, oh, women were sitting there weeping for Tamuz. Then he said, Have you seen this old son of man? Turn again, you'll see a greater abomination. So he brought me to the inner court of the Lord's house, all right? 25 men with their backs toward the temple of the Lord and their faces toward the east, and they were worshiping the sun toward the east. Okay? So you can't get away with it even in your modern Bibles. So, let's see. Oh, what do we want? A common English Bible. Be nice if we had it in English. So there were women sitting and performing the Tammuz lament. And at the end they were bowing to the sun of the east. So, um, so even your modern Bibles are going to get you. What's it? New American Standard Bible. We'll, we'll get the American version. To behold women sitting there weeping for Tamu. So the greater abominations. They brought me to and they were prostrating themselves eastward toward the sun. So you're not going to get away with it in your mo the modern Bibles even attack. Ooh, the new Catholic Bible. <laughs> new Catholic they were sitting weeping to, for Tammuz. That's their Lent. And prostrating themselves toward, toward the east, toward the sun. So, and then we'll close up. Where is it? Good news. Mm -hmm. And the women weeping over the death of their god Tammuz. Ho oh, ho! And they were toward the east, worshiping the rising sun. Ah, I would think, figured they would have changed that one. So, well, King James, your modern Bible attacks it, and your modern Bibles even go so far to put God, small g. 
I'm still King James, only King James, by King James. You will be handed to King James when you are absent from the body and present with the Lord. And hopefully when I end up present with the Lord, he'll put me at the gate and say, here, Sally, hand these King James Bibles out to everybody. Sure, no problem. There's your sunrise service. You Okay. Time to part company with that person because he's trying to find an excuse. When you look at the study, you can do the study on our website. You can find it or you can do your own. Tammuz is born December 25th as all sun gods are. Honey Bye is celebrating an Estar by her name, Estar. And when Esther gets pregnant, get this, when she gets pregnant, the days of her fulfillment of carrying a baby in the womb from Esther to December 25th is nine months. That's interesting. Esther is the mother goddess. And her son is the son. She gives birth to the Son of God, being the mother of God, Esther, not to Jesus, to Tammuz. Mary's never the mother of God. And there are Baptist churches, and there are Christians who are fouled up in this, and they're not going to get the truth because their church and their pastors and their Sunday school teachers and their deacons, and their trustees, whatever that is, don't dare to tell the people the truth. And when somebody comes in and starts telling the truth, we got to shut them up. we got to get rid of them. 